Sulfur is one of the most important nutrients for your body, especially when it comes to proper detoxification. Your liver uses sulfur to safely neutralize toxins and package them up so they can be eliminated through your bile or urine. This includes environmental toxins, medications, hormones, food additives, and more. Because some of the most important liver pathways require sulfur, I wanted to dedicate an entire video to it and also talk about what to do if you don't tolerate it. Even though sulfur is so important and your body can't properly clear out toxins without it, a lot of people have problems with sulfur and get side effects like feeling tired, irritable, foggy or bloated after eating certain high sulfur foods or taking sulfur rich supplements. So let's look at why sulfur intolerance happens and how to work around it so you can still support your liver without overwhelming your body. Let's start with the basics. Sulfur is found in foods like cruciferous vegetables, so broccoli, cauliflower, kale, and cabbage, allium vegetables, so garlic, onion, and leeks, animal proteins like meat, eggs, and dairy, and certain supplements like N-acetylcysteine, MSM, taurine, and alpha-lipoic acid. Sulfur helps your body make glutathione and supports the sulfation pathway in the liver. This pathway is especially important for detoxing excess hormones, neurotransmitters, and chemical compounds from food or the environment. The problem is that many people today are low in sulfur, mainly because of modern diets, soil depletion, chronic stress, and low protein intake. So naturally, adding more sulfur back in through foods or supplements seems like a good idea, and it often is. But if you tried that and felt worse, Here's what might be going on and what to do about it. Reason number one is that you have a high toxin load. One big reason people react poorly to sulfur is that it's mobilizing toxins that have been sitting in the body for a long time. It drives detox and in someone who's already overloaded, that can feel like too much too fast. If you've been exposed to a lot of mold, heavy metals, chemicals, or if your drainage pathways like your gut and kidneys aren't working well, you might get detox systems when you increase your sulfur intake. This can include things like brain fog, headaches, fatigue, skin breakouts, digestive upset, or things like anxiety and irritability. Now, what should you do about that? Instead of cutting sulfur out completely, try reducing your intake to a level that your body can handle. Start low and slow to let your body catch up. At the same time, work on supporting phase three detoxification, so make sure you're having regular bowel movements, drinking enough water, and sweating. Once the exits are open and working smoothly, sulfur tends to become a lot more tolerable. Reason number two is that you don't tolerate a very specific sulfur source. Not all sulfur-rich foods or supplements are the same. Some are much more potent than others, and people often react to very specific forms and not necessarily the sulfur itself. If this is you, the next step is to try a gentler option. Here's a general ranking based on my personal experience and what I've seen in others. It's somewhat anecdotal and reactions are always individual, of course, but it might help you find something that your body handles better. In terms of sulfur supplements, from most side effect prone to least, in first place, we have alpha lipoic acid. This stuff is really potent, especially in high doses, and online, you will find reports of all kinds of side effects from it. Next, we have N-acetylcysteine and MSM. N-acetylcysteine is a specific form of the amino acid cysteine, and MSM stands for methyl sulfonyl methane, which is a highly bioavailable form of sulfur. Both are fairly popular supplements, but still pretty potent. Third, we have methionine, which is an essential amino acid that provides sulfur and also methyl groups. People who don't tolerate it are usually those that already have too much methylation going on, so overmethylators. And lastly, we have taurine and whey protein. Both are usually well tolerated by most people, unless of course you're lactose intolerant to the whey. Now on to sulfur foods, again from most side effect prone to least. We have onions, eggs, garlic, and then cruciferous vegetables. These should all be self-explanatory. Many people don't tolerate onions and eggs, 
while most people can eat cruciferous vegetables and normal amounts of garlic. They just might not like them. Of course, also keep in mind that supplements are much more concentrated and therefore more likely to cause a reaction. So if you had a strong response to a specific supplement, it might be worth switching to a gentler supplement first and then maybe even to a food-based sulfur source and see how your body does. And if you're looking for a very mild, non-oral way to increase sulfur, don't forget about Epsom salt baths. They contain magnesium sulfate, which your body can absorb through the skin. It's a great gentle way to support sulfur detox without going through the digestive system at all. By the way, many people still believe that the skin cannot absorb Epsom salts, which is a myth. Just try it once and you will notice its calming effects. Great, the last thing I want you to look at are cofactor deficiencies. Another common reason for sulfur sensitivity is that your body is missing the nutrients it needs to process sulfur correctly. The main ones to look at here are molybdenum and vitamin B6. Molybdenum is crucial for breaking down sulfites into sulfate, a form that your body can use and eliminate. If you're low in molybdenum, sulfur compounds, especially from supplements, can get stuck as sulfites, which are irritating to the nervous system and gut. Vitamin B6, especially in the P5P form, is also involved in sulfur amino acid metabolism, and a deficiency can lead to buildup of intermediates that make you feel worse. You need to be somewhat careful with P5P supplements because they often come in high doses of 50 milligrams or more and can also kickstart phase one detoxification, which you don't want in this case. So I would try molybdenum first at a dosage of 50 to 200 microgram per day and only then see if you also need P5P. To wrap up this video, let me say that sulfur is an incredibly important piece of liver function and your body's overall detox system. But like anything powerful, it has to be handled with care. If you don't tolerate sulfur well, don't panic and please don't give up. It usually just means that your body needs a little extra support. Start by figuring out why you're reacting. So is it too much too fast or a specific food or are you missing a cofactor? And then follow the steps we discussed before. Most people eventually build up a tolerance as their liver strengthens and gets used to the higher sulfur intake.